and welcome once again to In Retrospection, the show where we review the retro today. I am Joshua Caleb. Hi, it's Graham Ellis. And Curtis Boyle. And we are playing, well, we're still recovering from our Barbara Marathon. So <laughs> I think Tom is still... I don't know what he, he said he still had like Barbie pink fever which I heard is pretty bad hopefully there's treatment yes well so we're, we're starting things off slow with some simple platforming here with isn't it Barnstormer <laughs> Graphics never looked that good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. That almost be a fun game as it is. That was a bit of false advertising, I think. Well, I mean, if you took some of the old games like Combat and uh, Tank and all that and kind of did there, that 3D look to them, there, there's actually fun. one of the intros to this is actually a 3D rendition of Pitfall, which is what we're actually talking about. But they do the whole that same thing, pitfall with 3D graphics. This is the game that made Activision what it is. Yep. And kind of the great Green. granddaddy yep. to platformers, in a way. Mm-hmm. Wasn't there like one other platformer? I thought there was like an arcade, something that had something to do with a car that was a platformish game. I have no idea what the name was. Yeah, this, this, this uh, like Pitfall, I, I don't think it happened with the original Pitfall. It did with Pitfall 2 for sure. Uh, it was actually one of the ones where it got so popular on the home console they had to make the arcade version afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh. Which did not happen <laughs> often back then. Mm. No, it was rare to go the other way. Usually it was the painful, oh, painfully bad ports. <laughs> oh, man. Gotta get used to this jumping mechanic again. Yeah, well, you only got like eight pixels to land on. I know. <laughs> Basically, if you land on his head and not on his mouth, you'll be okay. Yeah, you can land on his eyes. It's weird because there, there's like a, a delay in the jumping, especially when you're moving. Yeah. There's also a delay in the de- detection of whether you hit it or not. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely need a spring back joystick style controller. That'd probably help. Nice music. I'm trying to remember the, the, the original Pitfall. If I remember, one of the its claims to fame is that it had so many different screens to go through. I think it was 256, if I recall. Yep. Well, and the fact that the that the your little guy was actually multicolored. I was like one of the Oops. first at, first moving character to have like multiple colors. Well, the animation of the character was pretty good too at the time. Uh huh. Yeah, especially with the twenty six hundreds, uh, you know, kind of poor <laughs> video modes and stuff, and very little RAM it had to, to do with yeah. Pitfall Harry. He had a he had a yeah. name too. He wasn't just unlike Mario. The guy. <laughs> Mario around this time was Jumpman. Yeah, actually, I think if I remember, Pitfall came out the same year as Donkey Kong, didn't it? Or maybe the year after. Yeah, it's close. Pretty close. Should be close. But yeah, you're right. You're right, Graham. That this is probably oh what the start of the third party success for the Atari 2600. Because up to then, it was basically 2600 games were made by Atari. Yeah, this this game was in '82. Yeah. And uh, it sold 4 million cartridges, which I'll tell you is a lot of cartridges. <laughs> That's yeah. quite a lot even now. And this was part of the whole reason. I mean, Activision was created by a bunch of Atari, ex-Atari employees because they weren't getting paid enough. Considering if they wrote a bestseller, they just got a flat rate. Yeah, it was a flat rate. There was no credits. You weren't allowed to put your name on it. Yeah. And Activision um, encouraged all that. So when David Crane and everybody else came over and formed Activision, they... They'd credit, like, I remember the game ads at the time, I think even said David Crane's. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, right on, right oh, on ads, so. nice. Yeah, they were one of the first companies to really turn their developers into uh, names. 
Yep. And then, and then they, they got paid royalties based on how many copies were sold. So if they had a four million seller, they would make a heck of a lot of money. And the, the time it was like, here's you, you get paid down on what the going rate was, let's say thirty thousand dollars to make a game, and if it sold ten million cartridges, that's all you got was thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, but they the one ace they had up their sleeve was the fact that they did not follow Atari's guidelines for draw, doing stuff. They made their own. And that's and why they're more better. colorful. <laughs> they're more colorful. They're better sounds. They have better graphics. Well, what were Atari's guidelines? Bigger games. Um, it was very limited. They had this book, if I remember. Re- yeah, like you're only allowed to have up to four sprites in the screen at once. Why? Yeah, so many colors per line. They weren't allowed to do a lot of the hacks and 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 tricks that you could do at the end, right? Oh. Uh... And even their simple games like um, River Raid, you know, were far I'd... more colorful and, and uh, more challenging than uh, and more more, re- more replay value in them. Anyways, they uh, they were uh, one of the reasons the Atari lasted as long as it did. Mm. Of course, this game is ported to everything. Oh yeah. yeah. Where's Pitfall 2? Right there. Right next to my favorite. Oh, my tank. <laughs> yeah, this is the one that so I... Get the could... robot tank sky in there. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, Pitfall 2 added a few things to the original Pitfall. I mean, it, it was bigger even than Pitfall was, which was huge. And it has it added music. vertical levels, so you could go up and down in the map, not just across... It also had a checkpoint where if you got to a certain point, you ran over that little red cross. Oh, yeah. Then if you died, you'd actually go back to there, like you just did it just now. And you could get checkpoints throughout the game, so you didn't have to redo the whole thing if you died. You could actually just you know continue on from where the last checkpoint was. Not quite save games, but getting, getting towards it. Oh, yeah, and you can swim, and there's music. Oh, the whole works. Yeah, quite a bit more advanced. Oh, that's You're right. You're going to have a bugger of time in this. you got to <laughs> jump that exactly right to kill that stupid thing. rat. Oh, man. You have to jump a lot earlier from what I remember, but I, I didn't know. <laughs> then I just hit him in the bugger. nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of replay value in those <laughs> games back then. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, just go swimming the other way. Uh, screw the rat. Or swim down, I think. I think I was just swimming. <sighs> now, one funny thing about this with the swimming was there was no air you had to worry about. You could okay, you yeah, I was wondering about that. Yeah, that was a later innovation. Yeah. <laughs> air. <laughs> now you have to watch out for the electric eels. And, of course, the whole idea of Pitfall and Pitfall 2 is to get gold... And to go as far as you can in the game. Yeah. Basically, you're trying to get rich. Yeah. Uh, oh, good one. Ooh, more gold and a checkpoint. Oh. Yeah, go for the, checkpoint, the checkpoint first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now go get the gold. <laughs> You'll have to go down and back up. More gold. Must be a heavy guy. I noticed this version's got a more of a theme song yeah. than the uh, previous one. Yeah, the other one just had sort of little sound cues when you did something special. Yeah, like jumps and catching the roof lines and stuff. Oh, oh, hey! That's not fair. <laughs> no, that happens a lot, trust me. I call shenanigans. <laughs> now, one, one thing that uh, is, is different about these games compared to a lot of others out of the time, this is for both Pitfall and Pitfall 2, is that you don't actually shoot anything. No, you don't. They're, it's they're... all about exploration, dodging monsters, which all can kill you, like frogs, bats, whatever. Um, 
and, and collecting treasures, I mean, that's a fairly standard game mechanic, but there was actually no shooting, which was kind of rare for them, so that, that was another innovation, I think. And then Super Pitfall kind of broke that. <laughs> and you didn't have to worry about gravity. <laughs> well, except that it pulled you down. You could, you could plummet like 100 feet, but... And then just turn left and land on the ledge. <laughs> turn left. How far down does this go? Oh, it's, it's pretty big. There's a big lake at the bottom, isn't there? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. With the Neo. That's the bottom. Yeah. In fact, if I remember, there's parts on the left side of the map that you can only get to once you get to the bottom and go all the way across. Yes. I remember someone taking the time to actually map this all out somehow. I'm trying to remember if I did. I, I think one of my neighbors did, so I just wrote his name. <laughs> that would be something else. He would else. label like where all the gold bars are, where your checkpoints were. The ladders and so forth. Yeah. How far does this guy? I feel like I'm going in a loop. Nope. <laughs> no, there's an end of going left. You just—it's a pretty wide map. Much wider. Which than is the first amazing one. if you realize how much memory is in this cartridge. Yes. Right. Um, is it 8K or 4K or something? Uh, this one might be one of the later ones. It might be 8K. Okay, so now where? I'm stuck. There's no way to go up the previous? Uh-uh. Hmm. Okay. I obviously haven't played it a lot. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. It's probably way to the right. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, 4K. You're right. It's a 4K game. That's amazing what they could cram back then. Because, I mean, nobody comes close to doing it. Hello no no. World program takes 4K. I once saw Hello World take uh, 26 megabytes. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it was a new new compiler, and the guy was testing the, the switches. And because he included a library, it decided that because that library is installed, this library would be installed. And because that library is installed, this library would be installed. And basically, it linked every single library in the, Ooh, in, in, in the compiler. Yeah, okay, I'm going to post a link in the chat here that, uh, Joshua, you should probably bring up concerning this game here. Once you finish playing. Yeah, I think... I don't want to swim all the way to the right, so... Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is big. That is very big. This is the Commodore 64 version, but... Yeah, nicer graphic. The, the, the map, map, the, the, the map well is... The map is exactly the same. As you, you, you can show that just to show the scale of the world that you're in. Alright, well, let's try Super Pitfall. Now this one got dissed terribly from what I remember. Why is... Well, it, it broke the Pitfall Harry thing where now you, you can suddenly start shooting things. Um... The, the jumping controls and stuff from what I remember reading about on the Nintendo version, I guess, were actually far worse. There's a bunch of stupid things, like hidden things that you have to jump around to even see that they're there. They just suddenly pop out of nowhere. Like it was, I guess, a little bit sloppily conceived. Oh. <laughs> like maybe that? Oh, no, that's that's the good stuff. You're right now. <laughs> that's, the, that's the pitfall for the Harry. <laughs> Now, you do have a gun in this one. I think you get 20 bullets per gun. You can go and find Oh, them. yes. So. I can shoot stuff now. Can't crouch and you duck, shoot, though. Uh, yeah, you duck what you have to do for some of the monsters. Some of the monsters, if you want to kill them, you have to jump up to get them. Like, say, the bat, because he arcs up and down. It always amazed me that the bats could fly through walls. <laughs> but... <laughs> and actually, Pitfall 2 and this one both, they have... Besides treasure, there's other things you have to get. Like, I think in Pitfall 2, there was, like, a statue and a pet and a few other things. You got those same things here. Where you have to rescue your, your your girlfriend and a bunch of other things. And this one also had a bunch of little hidden worlds off that you could get to. 
um, which is part of the problem is because they literally made them quite hidden so you wouldn't even see where you have to go to get to these worlds. Huh. They have little sub-game levels that are hidden huh. away. It, it just doesn't seem to have the same feel as the other two games. No, it's I know like a bad it's trying to be a little more fancier, but... Yeah, and it's not done by the same people. I mean, they, David Green had nothing to do with this one at all. And I think that was part of the problem. It's like a bad version of Mario. <laughs> well, he even looks more like Mario. He doesn't even look like the Larry anymore. No. Well, I mean, yeah, if you looked at the box, and I mean, it's just the box art, but... Pitfall was more of an Indiana Jones guy with a yes. fedora and a leather jacket. Not, Not the spelunker. L- Luigi. <laughs> and now he looks like a butler with a mustache. And a It's more of a spelunker hat. clone. That sort of reminds me of a spelunker. Yeah. Wow. I mean, some of the same game elements are there, like the, the jumping frogs and the bats and stuff. Um, yeah. The graphics, they, I mean, they, they do look a little bit better, I think, than Pitfall or Pitfall 2. Which they should on a Nintendo or, or even the Coca Three for that matter, but the the gameplay just wasn't quite there, and and some of the stuff was done more complicated than it should be, just to the frustration of the player. How are we supposed to get rid of spiders? You can't. You have to jump them. <laughs> so Unless you can find a platform down below the spider, but only partly down below, so you can jump up from there and then shoot them. <laughs> So, spiders are the bane of Pitfall Harry. Yeah, I mean, they're using up to jump. Did I just... What? Oh. (laughs) Collision detection. underwater. Nope. Oh, you're almost fish food. <laughs> <laughs> There's a waterfall, which if you walk under there, it'll just drag you down. Okay, that, that's a very strange waterfall. Ow. It's more like a water burst. <laughs> <laughs> a water fountain. Yeah, you got one of the gold bricks. I think there's like a pet, what is it, a pet monkey or something and a girlfriend you have to get down there. I think some of them, if I remember... Oh, wait a second. Hidden areas. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said anything about the ceiling falling in. Oh, I forgot to tell you about that, didn't I? <laughs> well, the game didn't tell you about it either. It just, oh, <laughs> oh and then it spawns me right underneath it. <laughs> How nice. Later on, there's these giant Easter Island heads that come after you, too. Oh, nice. Oh, whoa, whoa. And you cannot shoot them. They're literally about three times your height. You just have to jump around and avoid them. Can you jump around there? Is that one of the hidden ones? I can't remember. I have no idea. There's, there's places like this where if you jump up in the air... Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that works, I guess. And they have one for each uh, suit in a deck of cards. So you just got it into the spade or the club or whatever that was. Yeah, it was a spade. And those will give you the access to go into hidden worlds. Oh, okay. Or, is it, or in some case, it might give you hidden doors. I can't remember. Cruising right along now. Ah! Oh, those bats. I have a hard <laughs> hat on. They'll drive you, batty. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> but a ting. I couldn't resist. Yeah. I don't like how it spawns me right on top of stuff. Um. Okay. Oh, spikes! <laughs> um. Oh. I. How? What happened? <laughs> The scorpion got you because he jumped the last six feet to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, sure. Reprogrammed by Pony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's uh, let's move on to uh, let's um double our bits here. Mine adventure. 
So we actually have a title this time. Ooh, and a story. And Pitfall here, he looks Pitfallish. Yep, he's back to being the Indiana Jones stuff. What is it? Dad, what? Dad! <laughs> Who's dad? Pitfall Harry's dad? Yep. Boomerang, even. Okay. This is a little more of the platformer I'm used to. <laughs> oh, we even, we even got the gaping pits. <laughs> and snakes. So you can take more than one hit. That's nice. Some of the aviance is uh, kind of neat where you have the like, eyes in the bushes looking at you and that kind of stuff. <laughs> now, can you get that like heart beating in the air there? <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, and we even go up into the environment a bit. And I just killed a monkey. <laughs> Look at it. So this is like a prequel? I'm not even sure. Or is it supposed to be Pitfall Harry's son? <laughs> or That was an interesting way to climb. I think you grabbed that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's pointing. Oh, it's, it's telling you to jump over onto the vine. I did. Exploding monkeys. <laughs> that's awesome. Why not? <laughs> the best kind. Oh, that's a snake. Watch out for the snake. Oh, bouncy spider webs. Of course. So this isn't a half bad platformer. Uh, I'm thinking that. Uh, I think it could, it could hold its own against some, like, Donkey Kong Country. Hey! Get out of here. Ooh, here we go. Is that an umbrella? <laughs> it kind of looks... Whoa, whoa. Um... <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> Oh, I see. You, you uh, jump and uh, use oh, it like a... I can crawl. It's a, it's a rubber tree and leaking. <laughs> <laughs> you grab the latex and jump, and then grab the latex and jump. Okay, so that's my checkpoint. Okay, those look dangerous. Whoa! Oh, whoa! Voice acting. <laughs> That's hyper advanced. Yeah, there weren't many Super Nintendo games that have voice acting. This is actually, you know, uh, must be a post RAR type of uh, game. Because I mean, yeah. this is not the normal. Uh, <laughs> display modes of a Super Nintendo game. Yeah, it was like after after the Donkey Kong Country thing, everyone was sort of pressured to really step up their game. Mm. Like, no, I mean, it's a... It's a pretty good sequel to, what, 
the original pitfall would have been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> a little hard to see the platforms you're supposed to be jumping on to distinguish. Well, it's hard to figure out in my <laughs> just from watching this what platforms are actually platforms and which ones are trees. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> Donkey Kong sh Country shared a similar problem, but it wasn't quite as bad as this. Oh, and that one breaks. Okay. <laughs> sure. if we should move on to the even more recent <laughs> Pitfall games. Because I have a feeling they may take a little longer to play. Ah, checkpoint. Oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> Smack. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, zip line into the tree. Ouch! Whoa! Whoa. Mm -hmm. Oh! Thud. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to end it. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> this thing bite me in the butt. <laughs> uh, okay. Now jumping even... What were we that actually looked like a fun game. Yeah, I know. I might have to play that some more. Okay, so now I think we might be tripling our bits. Or something. Well, it's at least four times the original. Yes. Still Activision. Legal, legal stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Pitfall 3D Beyond the Jungle. What, he goes in space? <laughs> That'd actually be interesting. Okay. New game. Huh. huh. Oh, we got a girl. Activision. Now, this is the last game they've done in this series, isn't it? Nope. Like when I was swinging through the South American jungle and I saw this glimmer. Yeah, a crystal. And when I grabbed yeah. it, the rift opened up. <laughs> up, up That's what it is. <laughs> she started gabbing on about this pure energy stuff called lucence that comes in two flavors. The blue stuff's good, and the red's no cherry. Now, one is that Bruce Campbell's voice? Excited. Yep. It sounds an awful lot like him. Yep, With it the red, is. The scourge imprisoned all of the Mokus and put a force in them. <laughs> Expect the evil dead to pop out of the <laughs> moment. Started. Well, he did that, uh, he they did some jungle, jungle show, didn't he? No, the pirate one. <laughs> it's better off being Pitfall Harry. Uh. About the time of the, what, the uh, Golden Monkeys? <laughs> Tales of the Golden Monkey? I always like Bruce. He came from the William Shatner school of acting. Yeah, I, I thought he was cool. I, I I like especially his recent stuff in the TV show Burn Notice. He's really good yeah, in that I've one. That. Yeah, my wife watches that. I didn't mind him when he was in uh, Xena. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I, think, I think my favorite from him is still the original Evil Dead because he was that wasn't trying to be funny huh. like the later ones were. It that is what, true. It just was. Huh. <laughs> yeah, it was so campy. Huh. I remember seeing that late at night huh. at a huh. theater somewhere. Huh. Huh. We started making fun of the movie, actually. Huh. Okay, so this is a departure. He also did, was responsible for one of the first mods for Doom. Where 
he took all the sound effects uh, from uh, the Evil Dead series. This is my Whoa. boomstick. And, <laughs> and uh, they put all these uh, ash sounds into the uh, ash doom. <laughs> sort of like um, uh, Duke Nukem before Duke Nukem. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Ah, oh, that's better. See, sometimes he doesn't sound like Bruce Campbell. Like the jumping and stuff, it doesn't sound like him. So basically, they've taken an adventure game, and it's now the reason it's beyond is it's basically turned into Super Mario Bros. Ah, excuse me, swing the vine yeah, north by using that D pad as yours. Yeah, you know. Oh okay, yeah, gotta gotta have the snarky commentary to the player. I really liked him when he's in the Spider-Man video games. He's the <laughs> he's the narrator for Spider-Man, that coaching him how to use his abilities in the game. Ah. And he's always had that snarky voice, sort of condescending, like, "Yeah, sure, you just defeated these guys. You think you're a big hotshot, you know, whatever." Of course. Yes. Huh. Huh. So why am I attacking with a pickaxe? Huh. And what are you attacking? Huh. Um. Huh. Huh. All those things. Spinny things. <laughs> Fairies. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> evil, evil fairies. Huh. Huh. I got it. This is the antithesis of that. Um, huh. Fern Gully movie where you're the prospector out to destroy the forest <laughs> killing all the fairies <laughs> with your pickaxe. <laughs> oh. Well, there's some nasty fairies. Oof. Time to vamoose. Huh. That sounded like Bruce. Yep. Well, I can't say this controls the greatest. Is it like an analog stick, or is it using the... Oh, no, no way? analog stick. Just plain old-fashioned D-pad. If there is an analog stick option in there, I can't find it. So it, I, th I think it actually con having some fun. controls kind of like Tomb Raider, where it's sort of that grid-based, weird... Oh, yeah. The camera's not too bad, though. Yeah, though I think it gets worse. I think I think this is where it starts to get really bad. Oh. See they this must be that orb key I've heard so much about. I think the Oh yeah, this is this is where it starts getting weird. The perspective gets really confusing huh. when trying to jump some of these platforms. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, For whoa, him. whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> yeah. Did he pick you up? Oh, whoa. Beat you around? <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> That's one heck of a scorpion, you know? <laughs> Oops. And then I just jump over the platform. Huh. Huh. Okay, mental note, avoid scorpions. Squeaking scorpion. No, no. Hey, look what I found. What did you find? Found a scorpion beating me up. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Oh. Huh. 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 Oh. Rock monster, of course. <laughs> well, that was easy. Easier than a scorpion. What? I can't fall? That's dumb. No, don't you touch me. 
Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What? <laughs> wait, awesome. wait, 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 wait a second. Oh, nice glitch. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't think that was supposed to happen. Oh, that's a good glitch. <laughs> Oh. I'm not sure how to do it, but according to the Wikipedia article on this one, uh, it says that the original 2600 version of Pitfall is in here as an Easter egg. Oh, nice. Well, let's see if we can find that. It's probably unlock an unlockable you get for beating the game or something. Or if you beat the game and collect all the goodies or something. Am I going down? Yes. <laughs> That's like Duke Nukem when he hits the walls. Whoa. Oh. What? What the heck? Whoa. Whoa. I think Bruce Campbell only did the actual talking and the... Whips. I don't think he did any of the actual um, character voice work. I'm agreeing with you on that. Yes. Boots. What do boots do? Whoa. Ow. Whoa. And it is hard to control a 3D game with a four-way D-pad. Harry knows when to go. What did he say? Harry knows when to go. Apparently it's a password code that you have to use to get the 2600. Oh. Ah. Crane's baby is the password. Whoa. Hey. Whoa. Hey, whoa. whoa. Let's do the time warp. Oh. This perspective is getting... Oh, that's the Mayan adventure. <laughs> Mind adventure had the same thing. Oh, yeah, yeah I was mentioning both that the huh. Whoa, 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 ah. whoa. Actually, you can switch them into 2D too with another code. What do you mean, switch them into 2D? It says, see Harry in 2D, use the password 2D Harry. Okay, let's check this password out. Password. So... Number two. Number two. Letter D. D. And Harry. H-A-R-R-Y. Reminds me how much I love the chat pad accessory on the Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So, new game, I guess. So, is the game in 2D? Is Harry in 2D? I think it's the character, but I'm not sure. I can't tell by the description. need to travel through the wilderness <laughs> there may be some hazards on the way yeah yeah i kind of got that huh. oh <laughs> 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 hey, yep, I'm okay. in it. Like D. 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 <laughs> uh, that's 2D, all right. 
I, I'm I'm paper hairy. <laughs> dry dry cranes, baby. Uh, yeah, that's to play the original pitfall. <laughs> so what what is it? Cranes baby. As in C R A N E S. Yeah, as in the creator, David Crane. Okay. They're an easy way to cheat, but they sure were cumbersome. Oh, okay. A little dried up. There you go. A little tinnier version of it. Why does that sound different than what we were playing in on the other one? Yeah, this the is a bit different than the different other audio one. chip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is way different. I'm surprised they didn't use samples because uh, yeah, because they, they couldn't. They couldn't be exactly the same. Uh. Well, all right, that w that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> For okay. all of a minute. <laughs> well, we are we already played the first one. Yeah, been there, done that. <laughs> So that's the fine. I believe this is the final Pitfall game. For the PS2, the Lost Expedition. I don't win so far, anyway. Well, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen a remake yet, so. But uh... yeah, because it says here the uh, the console version was released in February two thousand four, and the PC version was in October. Only in North America. And then oh, it was so actually released on the Wii in two thousand eight. Oh yeah. And the Xbox. But then it was renamed to Pitfall: The Big Adventure. Oh yeah. Okay, I remember that. <laughs> Oh, he's got a girl. Again. He's back to being more cartoony. Very much so. I'm going to explain why I was ported to the Wii, because it's pretty well all their games, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Almost. <laughs> now this looks like a Tomb Raider game. The swimming, the jumping, spinning. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> and whatever that was. Magic. <laughs> Pitfall Harry is now also a sorcerer. Okay. Well, he's got to expand his horizons. It's boring doing the same thing for 20 years. <laughs> Yeah, he went on a mountain in Tibet and learned magic. Uh, no, yeah, yep. Or he met Harry Potter or something. <laughs> He's fighting a magma lion. Oh, I get to play now. <laughs> This is not what you would expect from a pitfall game. It's super slam. <laughs> <laughs> With magma tiger. It's like the last, it's reminding me of the last episode of uh, the boss of uh, Mario 3D. <laughs> the platform trying to fight Bowser. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
So you start with oh. the boss. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Oh, he's not dead. Oh boy. Use your magic arms. They say that when a giant demon jaguar dripping fire goop is about to terminate your existence, your life flashes before your eyes. Actually, no one says that. Not a lot of people have experience with giant demon jaguars. Who does the voice acting in this one? I'm not sure. 24 hours earlier. earlier. Yesterday, neither did I. But that was before I met Stephen Bernard Wittenbinder, PhD, to be precise. <laughs> Thought we'd get introduced, since the only ones on this plane to South America seems to be you and my group of... You found that Toltec crystal skull and discovered that light when shine shines uh, through, it actually slows down. That research wasn't ever published. Roger Smith Who with the big O. Harry. Most people call me... Pitfall Harry. So you assume I'm like most people. Wow, they got a list of the guys the games this guy's done. What are you doing? Turning on the charm. This is my medium set. Is he related to Larry Laffer? Charm's getting to you, huh? Push her at the plane <laughs> after he <laughs> kissed her. I'm beginning to suspect there's some sort of relation between um, Larry Laffer and Pitfall Harry. Well, he almost looks like him in the original, the later versions of the game, right? Uh huh. That same cartoonish <laughs> look. And he wakes up in a bed of flowers. Nice. <laughs> well, I put a link in uh, on the ch chat for the S Stephen J. Blum, who does the voice here. That man has done almost every voice in animation history. <laughs> <the looks of> it. <laughs> Holy crap, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it's, it's like um, Frank Welker. Yeah. Frank, well, he Frank. was the guy in Medieval. Mass Effect. He was been. He's been in the Avengers. Mm -hmm. Cartoon is Wolverine and the White Star. He even did Cowboy Bebop. Oh, now that's an interesting take on the gaping holes. <laughs> <laughs> Looks a bit more dangerous this way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like Sarlacc pits or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you can double jump and do a flip. And I can grope with my hand? Well, that's just his character. <laughs> <laughs> throws a girl in throat. Yeah, yeah. Kisses women and throws them out of airplanes. So, yeah, you're going to grope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Harry Laffer. <laughs> mm, cousin to Larry Laffer. But it's a lot more 3D than the uh, even the... Pitfall 3D. Yeah. Yeah. No, but he's actually keeping some of the same original game game mechanics, like the flips and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a cool way to render it. Yeah, a lot more than floating platforms and magic fairies coming at you. <laughs> I also know Kung Fu. <laughs> Even though we were laughing about his glowing magical hands at the first. Hey buddy, what are we doing? Press whatever to grab treasure. Oh. Kind of reminds me of Psychonauts to a certain Two jungle amount, paint. but. Oh. 
Jungle Canyon. Is that a check? Keep expecting Tyrannosaurus Rex to come at you there. <laughs> a few raptors. <laughs> Swims pretty fast. Oh, look, an alligator. Oh! <laughs> oh, sweet! <laughs> oh, okay, come on. Oh. There's a lot. There's a lot more sense of humor as you leap to safety. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm Metroid or Samus now. <laughs> Morph Ball Harry. Don't worry, he's just having a ball right now. <laughs> oh. No problem. Just completely obliterate the ancient idols. <laughs> and the monkey. Oh! 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 <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yeah, now, since so they've been duplicating a lot of the original elements, like the black pits, the alligators, etc., yeah. is there a way to go down to the underground level where the scorpions are? I haven't seen it so far. I actually, can't. I kind of like this. This is definitely paying uh, more homage to the original game than, than some of the other sequels did. Mm. Yeah, definitely. It, it does have a kind of a Nintendo-esque uh, feel to it, too. Yeah, it's like they combined the old with the technology. So you can go that way, technology. too, as well. Oh dear. Oh no. Definite sense of humor. Okay. Aww. Left stick, left stick. Oh. <laughs> Going all Tarzan on the alligators. Gotcha. So you actually have to grab treasure. You can't just run o run across it. You have to use your grope maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Treasure grub. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Perfected in the bars of Africa. <laughs> and the, what, what was the lounge in Leisure Suberry? What was the name of that lounge? Uh, Something can't remember lizard. That. We can ask Al Crow tomorrow because he's actually going to be on game one. Oh, Al yeah. Al the creator of Meteor Suit Larry, he's actually a guesting on One of the last episodes, too. The last episode. Mm. It's too bad, but... Wake up the shaman. How do I wake up the shaman? Yeah, well, his budget's a bit, little bit bigger than, say, Joshua. Wake up! <laughs> oh, there you go. Just smack him in the face. Well, 100, 100 grand in t 12 weeks is a, a lot of money. Yeah, they're saying about seven grand per episode. How much does it cost you per episode, Joshua? <laughs> I haven't calculated it because I'm not actually making money. If you want to count the games I'm buying, yeah, I don't know. I'm buying so many games. But you would probably done that anyway, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's basically just costing me time. Yeah. Although I do pay about... Ten dollars a month for hosting and fifteen dollars a year for the domain. So twenty two bucks a month. <laughs> yeah, in pure expenses. Looks like I'll need TNT to blow this out. Maybe I'll find some. Now, do, you, do you have enough YouTube views to actually get? Uh, Are you kidding? I keep getting. I, I keep getting um flagged on YouTube. Oh, right, because we're breaking copyright by showing stuff that you can't Yes. Is too old. Te technically, we are, we are breaking copyright by playing this game and commenting on it and distributing it to the masses. I, I really do not understand that this is like free advertising. You're not giving the game away. You're encouraging people to go get it if they can, if they can find it or whatever. Else. Yeah. Well, in some cases, it's available for to buy on the... Uh, on virtual downloads oh, yeah. and consoles, so I mean, it's in their own interest to, for people to know how to play it and where to see it. 
Yeah. But I, th- you know, honestly, I think a lot of it's just the fact that the theme music, it, it's flagging the music. Yeah, and it's pretty well a bot that does it too, right? Like, I don't think any yeah. goes in there. Oh, Joshua, you naughty boy, quit putting that stuff up. <laughs> yeah, I, I really think in a lot of cases it's the audio in some of these games where they have music tracks. Oh, uh, what the heck is this? I can't even tell. Interesting. I wonder if I was supposed to roll under that. Oh, oh. that crumbles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, oh, whoa. Okay. <laughs> Since one of those games you don't stick around. <laughs> no. That kind of reminded me of Dragon Ball. Yeah. What the heck was It is a <laughs> bad guy. Reminds me of those guys from uh, Jungle George. <laughs> oh. Hey. Where'd he go? Where is he? Where'd he go? Ah, oh, he's in the air. Oh. Ran. Haha. Now give me your treasure. Gotta grow up them first. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Ooh, this moves. Who's snoring? Well, so far, I think. This one and the Mine Adventure are the best pitfall games I've played. I like this one. Yep, yeah, this this one, I, like I mentioned before, for me I like it because it's it's definitely homage to the original. Yes. But with a yes. whole bunch of new stuff added, so it's, it's kind of combines the old and the new. And kind of like, summarizes <laughs> the entire. Series. Did you Did you see that? And it's a good sense of humor. He was falling down the ladder. He was sliding down the ladder, and his chin was smacking every rung. I'll mark this on the map <laughs> so I can come back later. Uh, we need a torch. This might have so to. So there's a lot more to it. You got puzzles. You got physical puzzles. You got platform puzzles. You got quest puzzles. You can upgrade your it's... equipment at the shaman shop. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it kind of reminds me of Psychonauts, you know, like it's a, it's a, a lot more than just a pitfall here, jumping over scorpions and and collecting bats. and collecting vague, mysterious artifacts and moving around grid-like platforms with mm. the D-pad to yeah. flame to plane cockpit. We may have to put this one in the running for a long play series. <clears throat> it looks like a lot of fun. It's got a good sense of humor. It's got a lot of you know, original elements they've added that kept the uh, oh. flavor of the original to a certain extent. It's, it's a nice old game. And I like, uh, you know, when you die, you go kind of back to where you were. Uh-huh. Ooh. Swinging on the vines is more fun, too. Hey. Camera control doesn't seem to be too bad. No, it actually seems to be following me pretty well, and I and I just use the shoulder buttons to reposition if I need to. Wait, am I? Whoa. What's that underneath? Yeah, I'm trying to. It won't let me grope it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said not fireworks. Oh, that was the ledge. It's kind of dark on my screen. Yeah, there's there's something to be said for calibration sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. I also like how how he know he now knows kung fu. 
got the little motion blurs. Yeah. Or that could just be an artifact of the Google Hangout. <laughs> no, no, he's got motion blur. Yeah. Haven't seen any bullet time yet, though. Just more powerful attacks to squash the scorpions. So there's your RPG element. Uh huh. Yeah. So. <clears throat> I think you need to get up there somehow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what did I hit? I wonder if he could use the vine to jump in. That's what I was wondering. Turn around. And swing. And boom. Sweep kick. Oh, nice. How do I get in there? There we go. Ooh, do we get to rescue the lady? No, the pilot. Hey, hey, you made it. Any other survivors? The doctor, Mr. Leach, went off to find the others. <laughs> oh, I get it now. He's the guy from the mummy. And yes, a real improvement that's over the, uh, the other guy from the mummy. <laughs> Remember the crazy pilot, the British pilot? And then... I uh, get to rescue the girl? I suggest you let her think she rescued herself. Here. You might try gathering water from that pond out there. Oh, it's very clean. Tasty, even. I think it may even possess healing properties. And it looks like you could use some healing. Thanks. Then follow those tracks. Me, I've got to fly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I found out that Bittenbinder had survived the crash, I decided I'd follow his tracks to see if I could hitch a ride. I didn't know my choice would ultimately lead me to becoming lunch for a demonic jaguar, so off I went with my new canteen in hand. Well, that's probably a good place to end it. The end of chapter one, I guess. Yeah, I'll have to see if I can find this for the original Xbox. Yeah, so definitely worth a look for the PS2 or the Wii or the Xbox. Did, did you say they had on the PC as well? Yeah, it was released about uh, eight or nine months later from the console versions. Yeah, so give it a try. It's definitely one of the best Pitfall remakes, I guess. Definitely better than that PS1 one. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Campbell is cool and all, and I like him, but that game was too... Um, it did not age well. No. <laughs> yeah, I think it got a bit too further away from the original format. This one, like I said, it pays very well homage to the original. While yeah. expanding it greatly at the same time, which is, which is what you want. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that will do it for us this week. And now it's up to just for me to decide if I dare doing a Leisure Suit Larry episode oh you definitely should yes that one could be interesting but until then we will see you next week in the past <laughs>